Kingdom greetings. Hope you're well. Hey, listen, we're coming up on Shavuot or Pentecost, right? It's the Hebrew month Savan, and it commemorates the revelation of the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai. Now, if you're not into the Hebrew calendar, then apostolically speaking, Pentecost is the descent of Holy Spirit on the apostles. And so whether you're looking at this from an Hebraic perspective or a New Covenant apostolic perspective, it's all about Holy Spirit of glory and what he wants to do to bring you higher, deeper, and wider into the things of God, into his presence and out of the world's presence. I don't know about you, but I have completely unplugged from everything. I am plugging into him. I'm staying in higher realms. I'm staying in heavenly places. And this is what I strongly recommend for you in this season because we're supposed to be in the world, not of it. It has nothing to offer us. On the other hand, there's so much that you can encounter in heavenly places when you stay there. I have received, and my husband, instructions from angels, just like Daniel, Ezekiel, and John. My first angelic encounter involved an angel kissing me right in my mouth, similar to how angels touched Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Daniel's mouth to place God's words in them. We have had our apostolic mantles repaired by angels. You do know that angels are involved in healing, even as Proverbs 13 and 17 and Malachi 4 and 2 revealed One thing we've learned about God's glory is this. There is always more. There is always more. The second thing is that it's for the hungry and it's for the thirsty. It's for those that are longing for more, seeking more, desiring more. So if you are hungry and thirsty for more, of Holy Spirit of Glory on this Pentecost. These are our top two recommendations. Drum roll. Brrr. Number one, heavenly success, believers, authority in tongues, an instructional guide to diverse tongues, different kinds of tongues. Because some people only know about one type, but there are four levels or four types of tongues. Now, I want to share what Darcia said about this book. I was raised in a denomination that did not believe in speaking in tongues. I also attended a church that believed speaking in tongues should only happen once during your personal prayer time. This book provided a great explanation of the levels and benefits of speaking in tongues and how to obtain those levels. It has changed my perspective and my prayer posture so that I can go deeper. Thank you, Apostle Karen. Deb said, thank you, Karen, for an excellent explanation of speaking in tongues. This book increased my level of understanding and my spiritual experience. I have begun singing in the spirit and praying more fervently. God bless you. So you can read the rest of the testimonials out on Amazon. Here's what we know about this gem. People who never experienced the baptism of Holy Spirit, just like Darcia, coupled with the evidence of speaking in tongues, they do after reading this book. Also, people who have never encountered an angel at all, they do after reading this book. In fact, you will learn about seven types of angels, as well as how to speak in angelic tongues in this book. What say ye? It's time for an upgrade. It's time for you to ascend in Holy Spirit's power. I want to read the table of contents from this book for you now. 
Chapter 1, Have You Received Since You Believed? Chapter 2, The Varied Levels of Tongues. Chapter 3, Starts to Break Down the First Level. Chapter 4, Level 2, New Tongues. How to Receive New Tongues, The Benefits of New Tongues. Chapter 5 is Angelic Tongues and the Benefits of Angelic Tongues. Chapter 6 brings you into Tongues of Understanding, Level 4, and the Benefits of Level 3 and 4, Angelic Tongues and Tongues of Understanding. Chapter 7 is a great breakdown on the various types of angels. So if you're looking for that, you'll find it in this book. Chapter 8 is how to receive levels 3 and 4, angelic tongues and tongues of understanding. Chapter 9 poses a question and gives an answer. Are levels 3 and 4 for every five-fold officer? We conclude, and then I give you some additional resources and support. This book is a short read. It's only like 49 pages. You could read it this weekend. In fact, it's that short, but it's more than just reading. You will be activated. You will be awakened to a dimension of tongues that you've never experienced. You will ascend. So that's that. It's on Amazon. And now our second hot, fiery pick in this pack is Translate Me. And I tell you, this is like hidden in plain sight gold. Okay, not many people have picked it up. Not many people have reviewed it. And you know why? I think that the topic of translation scares people. <laughs> Does the topic of translation scare you? Be honest. It's okay. Because I'll tell you the truth. I was scared out of my mind to yield to Holy Spirit. One day I was driving down the highway doing 50, 60 miles per hour, and he attempted to snatch me out the car. <laughs> and I was like, uh... Well, you'll hear all about my first translation encounter. I finish that encounter and you'll see what I did, how I responded, what I learned. Okay, that's in this book. Also, your entire perspective on translation will change. For example, when someone dies, most people say or believe that they transition to heaven or to hell. Well, here's what we know. If someone dies and goes to heaven, he or she ascends versus transitions there. In fact, he or she was already living in heavenly places, just like we do, as one who is spiritually alive. Now, if someone dies and goes to hell by the sheer rejection of Jesus Christ, he or she descends there versus transitions there. In fact, they were already living in hell. They were already spiritually dead. So this book is going to stop you from planning your funeral or cremation because God has a translation and an ascension plan specifically for you and your loved ones. In this book, you will see how some of our disciples experience translation via their personal testimonies as well as the times that we've experienced it. So it's a great way to see the different ways that you can translate because there are more than one. So I'm going to read the table of contents now. That's what I'm flipping. And you hear the pages back, they're flipping. This is quite a bit of meat here. This book is 136 pages. It is not a weekend read, but you could start it. All right. And if you're really hungry, you may get through it. I've read entire books in one weekend. Honestly, if I'm fasting and I'm not eating and, again, attending to things of the flesh and things of the world, I can read a 136-page book in a weekend. So maybe you can't if you're really, really hungry. So here's the table of contents. How the body of Christ can use this tool for translation. And then this book is like a walkthrough because we're dealing with movement in the spirit. So instead of chapters, it has pathways. So pathway number one is gaining an understanding of glory angels. Pathway number two is building yourself up in your most holy faith. Then I go through the first translate me attempt in more detail. I show you some of the places I've traveled, 
such as to the courts of holiness through the heavenly gates, to a workout routine. I actually was translated to a workout routine, translated to Savannah, Georgia, translated to Plano, Texas. Then pathway number three, I explore faith and trust go hand in hand, how to develop more trust in your relationships so that you can translate and how secure faith can shorten the distance between where you are and where you want to be in terms of translation. Pathway number four is how to posture yourself for translation. I look at a tailor-made trip, the spirit, soul, body key alignment to translation. Your heart is a kingdom key, the worship key, the key of your heavenly language, the key of stillness and undivided attention, Reading the word is a key. Desiring and asking is a key. The key of connecting with someone else's calling. The key of praise and thrones. Ooh, that's good. Offense is a hindrance to translation key. And then pathway number five is this is your inheritance. A calling to others. And then you'll see the one, two, three, six different encounters of translation that some of our disciples had. Pathway number six is how you can translate in the various ways to travel. Pathway number seven explores where you can go. This is my favorite chapter because it explores spiritual geography. When you know where you're going, then you can translate. So it's a great chapter or pathway, I should say, for understanding spiritual geography before diving into the world of translation. And then I show you um, six or more, I should say, places I've gone in spiritual geography, such as the Marine Kingdom, the Storehouse of Heaven, the Throne of God. I went to pick up a scroll. I went to a prophet's prayer room. I went to the Storehouse of Authoritative Wealth and the Storehouse of Wisdom. Pathway number eight, I talk about what your first stop should be, the Throne of Glory, I share my prayer model with you, which is what those who experience translation use. And then I go into the different entryways. There are four, okay? And how to access the throne from the Father's mind. This pathway includes an activation exercise. Pathway number nine, oh, additional stops and modes. It will bring you out of that kind of new agey type of thinking relative to translation and modes of translation. Chapter number 10 reveals your location and glory and how that changes where you can go. Pathway number 11 is the revelation of your personalized travel plan, the Enoch principle, and then there are some resources and support. All right, this is also out on Amazon. So whether you pick up these two Pentecost Power Pack recommendations over the next couple of days or not, our prayer is that you will experience a glorious, out-of-this-world Holy Spirit encounter on this Pentecost weekend. Blessings.